Hey guys, it's Whitney from Come Home for Comfort. And when we talk about saving money on groceries, one of the questions I get asked the most is how to save money on meat. And really the best way to do that is to know what is the lowest price that you will see whatever cut of meat you're looking for at your grocery store and to buy it when it's at that lowest price, which sounds kind of obvious. But that's what you have to do. You have to wait until, for instance, for me, ground beef, when it is at $2.99 a pound. I know that's the lowest I'm ever going to see it in my grocery store and I go ahead and buy as many packages as I can fit in my grocery budget for that week. Now the price that you are going to pay for meat will vary based on where you live and what kind of stores you have available to you. So you want to go ahead and stock up on whatever meat you're looking for when it is on sale as much as you can. But something else that's really important is knowing how to store the meat so that it is stored safely and properly and also so that when you're ready to use the meat, it's easy for you to access. I never recommend taking a whole package of ground beef or chicken, whatever kind of chicken it is, and just shoving it right in the freezer when you get home because defrosting three pounds of meat is a huge pain. So I think it's really important to know how to store meat properly so that it's safe and so it's easy for you to use when you're ready to make your supper meal. So I'm gonna show you today how I store ground beef and how I store chicken breasts when I bring them home from the grocery store. So here we go. This is about six pounds of ground beef, so I have divided it into seven little individual packages of ground beef, and it has been double wrapped in the saran wrap. It has two layers of saran wrap on it. And as you can see, they're not all equal sizes. Something like this, I do in a smaller portion for spaghetti, then I have a bigger piece that I would use for meatloaf. So I just kind of divide them up the way I think I might want to use them. doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag, like a freezer bag, so that they will be even more protected from freezer burn. And then they'll sit in the freezer until I need to use them. So here they are all ready for the freezer. And then when I need some ground beef for a recipe the night before I'm gonna use it, I will just pull one of these little packages out of the freezer and let it defrost in the fridge overnight so that it's ready to go when I wanna make supper that night. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I do with chicken breasts that I get on sale. I got the split chicken breasts for 98 cents a pound, which is the cheapest I ever am able to get uh, white meat chicken. So I have I had two packages like this that I brought home from the grocery store. And if I just put these in the freezer hole like this, they would be very hard to defrost. It would take a very long time. It would just be very difficult. And I wouldn't really ever want to use them. So let me show you what I do with this chicken. That I get on sale. So one of the things that I do with the white meat chicken is I cut the skin off and then I cut the meat away from the bone and I cut it into fillets and then put them in little ziploc bags and then with a sharpie I just write on the bag how many are in there and this is one and a half um, chicken breast filleted so that I know what I have when I go to use them. And these stack in the freezer really nicely um, they lay pretty flat and then when I want to use one of these for a recipe, I can just pull it out the night before and let it defrost in the fridge overnight. And then by the time it is supper time or time to make supper, the chicken is defrosted and ready for me to use. Okay, here are three large chicken breasts ready to go in the oven. I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees. And then I just place these chicken breasts on a baking sheet. And this is actually like a jelly roll pan. I like to use this because it has a little bit of a because it has a little bit of a higher lip on it so that if the grease pops and splatters it doesn't fly over into my oven as quickly so it's better to use or you can even um, use a roaster pan if you have one of those I do that sometimes too I sometimes I forget to use it um, I put some salt and pepper on the skin you can see right there and you can also lift the skin away from the chicken breast and drizzle some olive oil in there and that makes it really tasty as well I didn't do that this time but you can do that and then I'm going to cook them in the oven at 375 for at least an hour or until they're cooked all the way through. And then I'll show you what happens after that. Okay, I pulled these out of the oven about 30 minutes ago. They look actually kind of pink on camera, but they're not. They're a nice golden brown color. They're totally done inside. I let them cool for about 30 minutes because it's way too hot to cut them open and chop them up like that. And actually right now it's about 930 at night and it is too late to cut these up. So I'm just going to throw them in the fridge and tomorrow I will cut the meat off and store it. I took the chickens that I cooked yesterday and I cut all the meat off of the bone and I used one of them in chicken chili that I'm making right now. And then the other two chicken breasts, I just divided each of them into a Ziploc bag like this 
I'll put those in the freezer and then I can pull them out and use them for a casserole, um, chicken and dumplings, another batch of chicken chili, anything like that. I know the Ziploc bag like that is a portion enough for one meal for us.